said I had a dream. I wasn't just a dream. It's a feeling I just can't contain. Don't look down. Everything will be fine for you now. Hey guys, Vlex, the editor of this video. Uh, just want to let you guys know that Makowski's POV won't be used much in this video. Uh, we realized as I was editing this that he accidentally recorded at 30 FPS somehow. So most of the video is just going to be Jimmy's point of view. So yeah, besides that, enjoy the video, Guardians. You want to do the intro? Do you want to just kind of like do like a quick little 30 second intro? Or <laughs> kind of talk? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, let's, let's just jump right into it, man. I'm Serenius. Oh, wait, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Good. That's me. I'm Ceridius. Right. <laughs> Ceridius and Mikowski here. We are going to be doing a special collab video today. And we're going to be working on a how to snipe video. I think both of our communities have probably asked for a lot of these. So I think uh, doing it together just made sense. Uh, Jimmy is a beast on mouse and keyboard. I play on a controller so we can each kind of provide different tips for each of the peripherals as well. So we kind of got both bases covered, console and uh, PC snipe tips. And, uh, yeah, what else? What else? What else? Do we miss anything, Jimmy? Eat my noodles. You look, you look scary. <laughs> you look so scary. You look very green. <laughs> that is indeed, indeed very green. Oh, uh, no, I believe, right. I believe that's it. We're going to go over, like, uh, top snipers to use and just how to snipe. Just point and click. Pretty much, we're going to turn everyone who watches this video into an instant snipe god. That's the plan. All right, so tip number one. I think Jimmy and I both agree this is the most important tip to get good at sniping, and that is Middling. centering. Middling. Centering. Centering. Whatever you want to call it. Proactively aiming your reticule at an opponent's head before the gunfight is the key to being good at sniping. And what does that mean? If you've already, if you start aiming at an opponent when the gunfight begins, you're too slow. You need to be aiming before the opponent appears around a corner. I need some snipe ammo here real quick. All right, so an example of good centering would be lining up the shot at the head level before a guardian appears. So we're gonna do that right here with Jimmy. All right, Jimmy, go ahead and uh, peek that corner, see what happens. <laughs> Good centering. Oh, my face. <laughs> good centering. And you can see that the reticule is far off of Jimmy's head, but because I had good centering, it was an easy snipe for me to hit. Plus, Jimmy's not shooting back. He's just being nice. Another thing, another huge thing about centering, whether you're on controller or mouse and keyboard, is that it completely eliminates any effort you have to have on the, we'll call it the Y-axis, right? Because if you're centered right where the head's going to be, you don't have to aim up or down. You only have to worry about going left or right. And so that makes sniping half the effort, twice as easy, and it's why it's the number one tip for us. It eliminates Y-axis aiming. You don't have to worry at all about Y-axis aiming. Mm. Good centering is not only effective for when opponents peak at head level, but also for when they slide through lanes, because you've already got a good reference point for where the head's going to be. All right, so one of the things with uh, good centering is you want to line up the shot and you want to use different reference points. <laughs> you want to use different reference points on the map uh, to know where the head is going to be. Um, a lot of times it can be, these can be, ge uh, a lot of times these can be geographical features on the map, but other times it can be little tips left behind by little lights. Chat, what is that? <gasps> YouTube, what is that? That is Jimmy's don't, ghost. Don't kill it. I don't want to be like Caden. <laughs> that is Jimmy's ghost. And if you noticed, it is exactly where Jimmy's head was before this. This is a great way, especially in 6v6, where there's a lot of ghosts sometimes littered around the battlefield and you don't even notice it. But this is a great way to line up your shot at head level and have very good centering. There it is right there. That's my head. That little ghost is where my little head used to be. If you guys didn't know about that tip before, leave a like. Uh, subscribe <coughs> to both of our channels. Yeah. It's up to me. Do it. Yeah. Now come over oh, here. Sub to Jimmy. <laughs> no, sub to both of us. I mean, like. 
Okay, so, so on your, I don't know, well, it, it might depend on the graphic settings, but do you, do you see, look on this wall. Do you yes. see this line oh, that across line, it? That line. That's perfectly Don't lined up. Yes. Look at that. That line is perfectly lined up with where Jimmy's head is. Perfect. So you can use, like, if you get used to snipe lanes like this, like, this is obviously a big snipe lane. You can get used yep. to point of reference on how to uh, level your uh, reticule for head level. Yep. That That is exactly lined up with your head. Another thing is, too... If you have if you have the time, you can use a teammate to level up your head. So like say I'm I'm looking this way and you're behind me, Hunter. Mm -hmm. Okay, do it this way. Ah, and behind me. Good point. Where your head is, where the, the where my, head's gonna yeah, be. Where my head good is, point. you can use my head yep. as a level reference. Look at that. Very good point. That's a great point. Yeah, finding different reference points around the map is the key is 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 not necessarily the key, but finding different reference points around the map makes centering so much easier to do. Centering! Um, centering! And so to sum up centering, if you start aiming at the start of a gunfight, you are... You should be aiming proactively and before an opponent even appears to have really, really good centering and to practice uh, ultimately at getting better at it. If you do these things, you will get better at centering. So like a thing where a sniper versus sniper battle. So say like, so say like um. We're strafing in and out, right? Say mm -hmm. you you body me. But and then, I miss, and then you strafe back into cover. It's almost guaranteed that you're gonna strafe back out because you know right. what I'm hurting. I'm easy body. Advantage. So if you're the one that's bodied, you can take advantage of them being aggressive, and then headshot them because they're gonna strafe back out. That, I think that's a great point. So knowing that they're already going to peak, uh, it makes it it makes that kind of like anticipation a lot easier. Like you you don't have to even anticipate. You know for a fact they will double peak you because they're up in the gunfight. Yeah. So you can you can easily like have that headshot lined up because most of the time, when when you're hurt like that, people get aggressive. And usually when people oh, yeah. get aggressive, like shot, they get you predictable. Get pull shields, I'm going to come out and peak. Aggressive means predictable, so that you can usually stay there for a second longer and go for the headshot. Yeah. But yeah, Jimmy showed us a really good reference point here on Endless Veil. But if you go around in private matches with your buddies, you will find different lines and reference points on every single map to make centering much easier for you. So like, I do a lot of one v ones with people sometimes, like because they want like hints and tips and stuff. And a lot of times, it usually comes down. We usually end up fighting with the last word sniper. Which is fine, but they end up using their sniper a lot, which is okay too, but you're really depending on that sniper. And if you're really going to depend on that sniper, you have to be able to position yourself to get away if you miss. Because if I slide out, if, I, if I'm just out here in the middle of the open, like there's no reason to be right here. I can always just, it's just, it's simple, but a lot of people miss it. Just stand next to this wall. So if I'm sitting right here, if I'm shooting at Hunter and I miss, I just simply turn right and keep back into cover and... Whereas if I'm out in the open, I shoot and miss, I have like so much far of a distance to run and just one bullet can make the difference of your life and death, like just a hand cannon shot. So it's simple, no but, doubt, but always position yourself in your cover, always have an escape route. And with a mouse, like you can slide out with a shot and then slide back into cover. So it's a lot easier to yeah. just slide out, take your shot and then get back into cover. No, I think you bring up a really good point, especially if you're, if you're like, if, okay, so like, like, I, I feel like in a lot of games, it's this snipe lane right here. If you want to be that initial sniper and you want to get that first pick for your team, don't, don't, don't be, don't be stuck right here. Like Jimmy said, keep yourself tight to a wall. That way it's just, it's one swipe of a mouse or one click of the stick away from a hundred percent cover. If you get stuck out here, you're going to either get sniped in the face or you're going to get team shot. You have no chance of surviving no matter how fast you are with mouse or how quick you're going to bait out. It's not going to work for you. Uh, you really need to, like, as Jimmy said, stay very close to cover. And if you miss a shot, don't keep shooting. Give yourself a breather, man. Reload. It's okay. You know, I, I think a lot of people, they get, once they the, once they commit to a sniper fight, or they start shooting shooting shots, and especially when they get uh, damage on an opponent and they do a body shot, they get so, uh, I guess, tunnel visioned on getting that kill. You don't have to finish the kill. It's a win just to have them weak and have them backing up off of, off of an objective. Or backing up off of a team push that their team is making, 
Uh, so just because you didn't get the kill doesn't mean you lost the fight. And that's what I was saying earlier, like what he was saying at the tunnel vision. That's that's what I was saying earlier. When people get aggressive, if when people get aggressive, you get predictable. So you're you become yep. an easy target. Yeah, chasing is is a sniper's best friend because what we do is we just peek on this wall right here and wait for you to come around a corner. And it's an e it's just it's easy. That's the easiest thing you can do for a sniper is be predictable. Uh, so another tip I have here is is always push with teammates. A lot of people with sniper they get kind of like you know the they get a bad rap for sitting in the back of spawns and hard scoping, right? There's a time and a place. Throw to you a wall. Down. But for the most part, you want to be pushing up with your teammate. And so if Jimmy's up here in front of me and he's leading the charge, shooting with his hand cannon, I want to be right here behind Jimmy, avoiding obviously Jimmy because I don't want to shoot him in the back. But Jimmy brought up a great point earlier. I can use his head as a reference point, and he's essentially like my 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 bodyguard, my shield. I'm your tank. Um, so even if he, he's he's my tank. You're my DPS. So even if you get down to low HP. You can still kind of be a little aggressive and 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 still push with teammates, uh, and still push as long as you're with teammates. Yeah, just because you have low health doesn't mean you can't peek. If you have teammates in front of you that are so, if say say I'm an enemy and Hunter's back is wounded back behind the guy, but there's another guy in front of me with full health or that I've already engaged, right? I'm sitting here shooting at this enemy who's even though Hunter's back, most people aren't going to take the time to disengage the person they've already engage in a firefight with to to go finish off you know this other sniper they're gonna they're gonna get tunnel vision and worry about finishing off this guy so even though you're in the back with low health you're you're gonna be okay still so you can yeah, push with low as, health that's a great point is yeah you can push with low health as long as you're with and you know they're sponging some of the damage you can get those low hp snipes those clutch kills when you're when you're weak because you have teammates with you that's a great point that's a really good point. So, so Hunter, as a controller user on PC, which is essentially going to be the same as console, just mm -hmm. with less frame weight and, and hardware or stuff, people always ask, like, you know, like, how do you get away? Say, I can't, I can't, I can't slide out and then just get back into cover immediately because my controller, like, sensitivity yeah, makes me play like this. this. Right. What do you like, do? I'm screwed in a battle right here. Yeah. I can't just slow turn and get back. So I would say, man, for, and I hate to just have, tell everyone to jump on the Hunter bandwagon because I know there's enough of us. But if you're on a controller, I think Hunter's the best class you can play because you can slide, snipe. Even if you miss, you can just e instantly get uh, get to cover with your dodge. On mouse and keyboard, Jimmy here, show the example right here. On mouse and keyboard, dude, you don't have to be on a Hunter. You essentially have a dodge evade just with a quick flick of the wrist. But you can, uh, you can mimic that effect on a controller by using the bottom tree dodge on a hunter. The gambler's dodge. All right, so Jimmy, talk to me on a Titan. What what are some things I should think about on a Titan? What like What's a good exotic to with sniping on a Titan? What I mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And why is that? Because <laughs> they're marked. Yeah, just because. Have you not seen it? Body me? Uh, so look at that. Just hidden here, marked behind a wall. Stand still for a second. So with that, that's kind of right in the middle of the torso. Aim a little above it, strafe out. Easy headshot. With one eye mask. Essentially like, it's essentially like, yeah, it's like mimicking uh, flawless execution wall hacks. That yeah. You get on a hundred, both one eyed mask. And we all know how strong that class is. Sniping and, and special blades is, I almost, it, it's, it's, it's not fair. Um, but until Bungie nerfs it, have fun, you know. Do me a, again. Have a, have a heyday with it in the crucible. Yeah. So when you're zoomed in, like, of course it gets smaller, but any little above, you can, you'll get used to predicting it. One eye mask, best exotic, of course, for sniping, but you're not always going to rely on exotic for sniping, so. Yep. I've been running Doom Boys a lot lately for the snipe, for the sliding, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice because you can just, especially with the mouse, you can slide, take your shot, and just keep sliding. I noticed in some of my recent videos, like I've been practicing my flicks a lot. So I've been getting pretty, pretty good at them. We'll, we'll go over those a little bit later. Probably talk about that a little later. I was gonna say, so for armor exotics, like on a Titan, you know, there's not a whole lot you can use. One eye mask is probably the best for sniping, but one eye mask is also just the best exotic in general on Titans. Now, in general, if people don't already know, like, so let's go over normal armor hunter. Like, what kind of mods for a sniper? The two biggest perks you're gonna want for sniper. Is sniper scavenger on your boots? Not your boots, on your gloves and your cape or mark, whatever. 
and you can continue. Yeah, if you have two sniper uh, scavengers on, you can pick up three bullets per box that you run over. Minimum. Which essentially eliminates minimum. Yeah, which essentially eliminates the kind of ammo economy uh, hardships you might have with special ammo. If you run scavengers for a sniper, you're going to be running over ammo and picking up plenty of it. Um, another thing I would do if I was a sniper is I would do the raid. And the reason I would do the raid is because the raid gives you a chance to drop enhanced armor. Here you can see the enhanced sniper rifle targeting. As Jimmy just <laughs> he goes crazy on the tight. Uh, but yeah, one of, the, one of the things I would absolutely look for on a hunter, or any class for that matter, is the raid armor with enhanced sniper you name it. On the helmet, you can get enhanced targeting. On the arms, you can get enhanced reload, enhanced unflinching on the chest, enhanced dexterity on the pants. Go for all of that because it tremendously helps. Uh, when I first started using this enhanced sniper rifle targeting helmet, it gave the illusion of snapshot on snipers that didn't have snapshot. So this is an absolute 100% armor that you want to go pick up if you're looking to snipe. Uh, for the hunter class, my favorite exotic to pair with sniping is dragon shadow uh the reason that is is not only do i get instant reloads every time i uh i dodge but the uh but dragon shadow gives me enhanced dexterity anytime i roll so right now i've got a little bit more to work with and especially for someone on a controller the for me enhanced handling feels like it increases my sensitivity in like a moment's notice so when i have that little extra kick of adrenaline i really need to maybe do a 180 and snipe a spectral bleed who's chasing me or uh, get back in a fight. I love having Dragon Shadow with the enhanced speed and the enhanced dexterity it gives you when sniping. Uh, another tips for hunters when on the Spectral Blades class is you don't have to be crouched to proc flawless execution. You can actually be extremely aggressive and slide snipe and still proc it. So watch this. You can see right there, chat, I never crouched and it almost looked like the entire time I was sprinting but I was still able to proc Flawless Execution because of the slide. So I guess anytime you crouch or uh, press for me, it's B. Jimmy, what's your crouch? Oh, shit, sorry. No, that's fine. That was great. <laughs> what's your crouch? Left control. Left control. So yeah, anytime you hit left control or B, it's going to give you Flawless Execution. You do not have to hold it. You do not have to stay crouched to earn that perk. Well, I do, I do left control for um, hold, and I do C for toggle. Oh, okay. So whenever yeah, I'm I like that. usually yeah, usually stuff. usually when I'm on a hunter, all you see that way I know I'm crouched, but yeah, I don't think it really matters. Like like you said, explain it all. Like as long as you're sliding, you can still get that rock yeah. off. If I was looking for a sniper to pair with this class, go for a sniper, maybe even a beloved with firmly planted and moving target on it. I feel like that would be just super OP if that was your play style, which is just slide snipe, slide snipe, slide snipe. You would literally be in vis and have wall hack the entire game. Oh, speaking of perks, what perks do you want on a sniper? All right, so we all know the number one perk you want on a sniper is snapshot. If you don't have snapshot, it's not that it's a it's a throwaway, but it's just I mean, Jimmy, it's tough, right? It's tough without snapshot. You 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 get flinched quicker, you're not engaged in battles quicker. What are some of the deficiencies that you've seen when you run without snapshot? So I'm gonna tell you 100% right now, like snapshot. If you're in doing any kind of competitiveness, that you're gonna want snapshot because you have to. If you're if you're going against like quick play casuals and all that, you'll you you'll be fine with that. You can kind of you know scope a lane for a little longer, but whenever you're in competitive gameplay, every millisecond counts. One millisecond could be the difference between you know getting into cover or getting that shot off and make one kill and you can win a game by one kill so when you don't have snapshot on a rifle that's just wasting milliseconds for your gun to go from your hip to your you know aiming down sight that you could be using to actually be already be aimed and using your brain a bit more to think about like what direction do I move and how far do I need to swipe and stuff and swipe across their face to uh when to pull the triggers so snapshot helps you um it helps give you more time to think about your aim versus just like oh let me pull my sniper up that's what snapshot's good for and the other good thing with snapshot going back to our first tip of centering if you have good centering and snapshot on you have 
like you said, milliseconds between you zooming in and that guy being dead because you don't have to adjust for anything. Uh, you don't have to flick. You don't have to do any of that. The the, the reticule is already going to be on the head, and with snapshot, it's just going to it's just going to get on the head. Yeah, that snapshot. It's that it's that one millisecond. If you don't get that shot off, and they get theirs off, and they hit you, you're flinched. Yeah, that's why you want snapshot to like you know put put time on your side. And then uh, yeah, two other perks that I, I I kind of alluded to a little bit earlier, but firmly planted and moving are two of like my X Factor perks that don't get talked about a lot. I think a lot of people disregard firmly planted because they think you have to be sitting down crouched uh, to, 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 to make it uh, at all effective. But that's not the case. As we showed with the flawless, flawless execution slide perk, you can still proc firmly planted while sliding. It's, that perk still works when sliding. And then moving target just kind of buffs it even more with range when moving around. And that's kind of for me, it's kind of like a quick tip for controller users again, Jimmy. I play on five sensitivity, and I know you don't play on very high sensitivity on mouse and keyboard either. You do not have to play on a high sensitivity to be a sniper god and hit all the flick shots. In fact, you can kind of uh, you can give it that drag effect. You can give it that flick effect by moving into a lot of your shots. So that's one of my tips on a controller and even mouse and keyboard is to never stand still and snipe. Always be moving. And if you move and snipe, you'll you'll get that kind of like I said, exaggerated drag effect or flick effect without having to play on you know. 1200 dpi or 10 cents on a controller and then uh last tip last tip for controller users i would suggest you guys run on where is it i would suggest you guys run bumper jumper the reason i would suggest bumper jumper is because it gives you the ability to keep your hand on the right or excuse me it gives you the ability to keep your right thumb on the joystick and uh if you use scuff paddles obviously that's a way to do it as well but if you don't have scuff paddles i would highly suggest you run jumper uh bumper jumper and uh and just do that I always recommend an elite controller. It's like the best investment. If you if you yeah. if you can't play call, so so for me when I play a controller, I play a controller for like fucking so many or fifteen years or so, and like I always play default. So I'm not about to switch my the way I hold the controller yeah, to play to play claw true. or um bumper jumper because that just ruins my muscle memory. Yep. But the elite controller when I got that like that doesn't really. You're, you're, so when I play, I just use two fingers, my index and thumb with controller. But with the Elite controller, it added in like new fingers, so it wasn't anything to relearn. Yeah. It was something new to learn, if anything. Interesting. Interesting. So for me, Elite controller was like, if you're competitive and you want to, and your controller and you want something to invest in, definitely a, a better controller, like a Scuff or an Elite. Yeah, because you just can't, you can't, you can't risk having any time off the stick, off the right joystick, which is what you're, aim, what you aim with. Uh, even a split second being able to not being able to move that is going to get you killed in any of these uh, competitive situations like Jimmy said Okay, so back on to the perks for a sniper um, Definitely you want snapshot 100% second perk. It's fairly up to you. I think Almost almost anything works, but there's there's gonna be some perks out there that are like better than others Like I really like snapshot outlaw or snapshot slide shot Which you can get on the soul survivor so yeah, well, slide shot's super clutch. But what I was gonna come what I was next thing I was gonna go into is uh what mod do you want on your sniper? Well real quick, real quick, I think Jimmy brings up a great point. So one of the reasons I like Dragon Shadow is that it eliminates any time I have to spend reloading. And on a sniper, you can I mean you can really drag behind with reloading. I mean it can take a, a I think snipe, uh, I think reloading on a sniper is probably like one of the most tedious reloads. Uh so if you have outlaw, if you have uh slide shot, or if you have uh, Dragon Shadow on it eliminates that time you spend reloading and if you can find a perk or an armor piece that'll help you do that That's gonna be something you want to look for So um, weapon mods yes. On a sniper. Weapon what mods. what do you like? Okay, so for me, I I'm a huge fan of Icarus. I think Icarus is a is is a slept on I know I think I don't know most people probably uh, lean towards targeting adjuster, which makes sense. It makes the aim assist and the hitbox a little bit bigger for both PC and console. Yeah, it works on mouse. Um, yeah, yeah, people, yeah, that's another common uh, misconception we can bust here. Uh, but aim assist and what's it, what would you call? Um, bullet magnetism? Yeah, bullet magnetism exists on uh, on PC. And if you have targeting adjuster, it does help equally on, on mouse and keyboard as it would on console as well because it makes that hitbox a little bit bigger. So targeting adjuster is, of course, going to be one of the, the mods you want to put on a sniper. 
if you have a high range sniper rifle, it's essentially like having targeting adjuster already. So if you have a high range sniper rifle, consider putting Icarus on your sniper to completely change the game. I think, you know, a lot of times sniping, you can slide snipe, you can, uh, you know, you can, you can sprint and come out of snipe, but there's really not much from a mobility standpoint that you have options for when sniping until you put an Icarus mod on. Icarus takes your accuracy level in the air from about 40 to 50% without it to almost 90% with it. So it's still not a guaranteed hit, unfortunately. Uh, Bungie devs, we'd love you guys to switch that. But uh, it's not a guaranteed hit, but it does make it a hell of a lot more likely that you're gonna jump shots. That was an Icarus shot. That was an Icarus shot there, and yeah, and you still hit it. Mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons I really like Icarus is because I can take opponents by surprise. If I'm hiding behind a box here, I can jump out over the side and still have a fairly reliable shot at him. Um, so with Icarus, you know, going back to that X, Y axis kind of thought process with centering, Icarus adds a level, the, the, the Y axis adds a level to your game that you you wouldn't have without, uh, without this perk. Icarus. Icarus. I was jumping too, which made that an even more difficult shot. And you, you, you saw there with Icarus, it just gives you much more uh, reliability. When in I think my ridicule is right on your head, too. That's crazy. Yeah, we, so we, we got lucky here because I think both... Uh, right there, we're both at 100%. Usually it's at about 90. But those are two really good quick examples of how Icarus can help you, uh, you know, bring more verticality to your game. And I think if you ever grew up playing Halo or Call of Duty or any of the previous shooters that came before Destiny, they all had a little bit of verticality that I kind of miss uh, with, without Icarus on. So uh, so when you put Icarus on, it kind of brings back that nostalgic feel, for me at least, from sniping in Halo and Call of Duty, where you can hit shots in midair. And plus they look cool as shit. <laughs> right? Montage! They look, cool. they look cool as hell, yeah. Montage. Clip it! Clip it, G! Um, so yeah, that's uh, that kind of runs down targeting adjuster and the Icarus mods. All right, so uh, what were you saying about a targeting adjuster? Okay, well, what I was gonna say is like, so so for me, aim assist is this is this reticle magnetism right here, right? Mm -hmm. So so if I'm moving across him, stand still. So if I'm moving across him, I'm not touching my right stick, but my 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 reticle kind of drags with him and sticks to him a little bit. So that's that's aim assist for me on a controller. They don't have that on the mouse. My reticle is not gonna drag with him unless I move my mouse. So the next thing I was going to go over is what I what I believe is bullet magnetism. I believe this is different than aim assist. Like I said, aim assist is what I think your reticule sticks to the target. Bullet magnetism is when your bullet like will curve to the target. I think targeting adjuster helps if you have a lack of range, but target adjuster for me basically like um it helps you hit more shots. It essentially like yeah. It gives you better target acquisition. And it's the same thing as like the sniper targeting helmet. Yep. You can see how the and, bullet kind of curves towards him. So outside of Icarus and targeting adjuster, one of the mods I would suggest putting on, especially if you're running quick play, I wouldn't necessarily use this in comp. Uh, but if you can, let me find it here. Here it is. If you can find an appended mag sniper and you place a backup mag on it, it'll give you two extra shots instead of just one. So I can take something like a beloved, which usually has four in the mag and take it to seven. Uh, with appended mag and backup mag. So if you pair those two together, you're gonna have a lot of shots. Like I said, wouldn't necessarily run this in like comp, although it could be could be good for double bodying. Uh, but especially in quick play, it's uh, it, it allows you to not have to reload when you're sniping. Outside of okay, so we talked about perks. What are some of the magazines that you like, Jimmy? Why don't you uh, start and give me one or two that that you like to put on your uh, on your snipes? Like on the middle tree, like appended uh, mag, aloe mag. Yeah, what mags are you looking for? Yeah, what mags are you looking for? Well, if I had the option, I would go Accurize Round all the time. Yeah, that's, it was a trick question. If you can get Accurize Rounds, go for it, because this adds significantly. Look at all the, look at how much range you switching off of Accurize Rounds. I mean, it's almost, in a, it's, a, it's almost, I would say, our, it's actually an additional masterwork. It's, a, it's an addition, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's an additional masterwork of range. Uh, which is going to make sniping way easier for you. It's going to give you better accuracy, better aim assist, better bullet mag magnetism. And then when you're trying to hit those jump shots or no scopes, accurized rounds, the more range you got, the more likely, the more likely you are to hit those, uh, hit those kind of mobile shots where you're trying to no scope or hit a jump shot. 
Um, as for barrels, what are some of the barrels you're looking for? Like, what are your thoughts on range versus handling stability? Like, what are you, what are you looking for? I always try and go for range, range over stability. So, so like, that- especially, so on a mouse, you don't have as much recoil, or at least you have more control over it, right? But even on a controller with a sniper, like it's such, it's a one shot. And then you have just so much more time to like readjust for that one shot. So you don't necessarily need stability on a sniper because you have so much time between each shots to readjust. So that's why you always, I always go for range because as we shown like a little bit earlier, like range adds more bullet magnetism. Dude, I am actually shook right now because I could have sworn doing this video I was going to be the guy who says go for the range and you were going to be, you know, maybe saying go for the handling because you're on mouse and keyboard. But I think this just completely settles it. You like, and, and I think a lot of people overlook range itself as a stat. And with, especially with things like masterwork, everyone's going for handling guys, go for range, masterwork, go for range barrels, go for range magazines. Uh, that is, th- th- that is the most helpful uh, assist you can get from 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 the game is when you get a, a a sniper with more range. Range is, I think, by far the number one thing that you want to look for uh, when you're building out your snipe. I think if you want handling, make up for your handling and your um your armor perks, your dexterity. Yep. Because you can add dex- you can add handling with armor, but you can't add range with armor. That's a good point. Run like sniper. Run like sniper dexterity in your boots. And that, that should make it for all the masterwork on your handling. <laughs> or, uh, going back to the Dragon Shadow, uh, just just dodge. And yeah. And get increased in, uh, buffed handling. And there's other, there's, other, uh, there's, other, there's other exotics on other characters that'll give you a buff in handling. But none of them give you a buff in range. So, when you're looking for, you know, like we said earlier, barrel, magazine, or even masterwork, go for range. If you don't have accurized rounds, like I don't have accurized on my... I don't even know if you can get accurized on my Soul Survivor, but I have the five round magazine perk, which is what I go for. Yeah, yeah if you can't get a, if you can't get accurized rounds, go for something that gives you more ammo. More ammo or more range. No. Nope. All right, so Jimmy, give me a couple snipers. If I'm new to sniping, I'm watching this video and I'm like, you know what? I want to go out and try to snipe. What are some of the snipers that uh, I should go for? Pilot Oath. <laughs> Twilight Oath is a great sniper. Uh, it's very, very snappy, very light. It's got a kind of a weird scope, but it's still short zoom. Now, so that's uh, important to consider. But but for real though, like sniper wise, so the main snipers it's gonna be Twilight Oath, Supremacy. Yeah, Twilight Oath, Supremacy, and Beloved. Those are your main snipers right now. Revoker is like a redheaded stepchild. Soul Survivor is what I use, which is also kind of a redheaded stepchild. I don't really see a lot of people using it besides mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. Um, those are going to yeah. be your main ones. You're going to have a look, couple of other ones like Aachen and some other ones like that Hunter can name, but those are the main ones right now. Yeah, those top three are the Supremacy, which you can get by doing the Last Witch Raid, uh, the Twilight Oath, which you can get in the Dreaming City, or by doing the Menagerie, and then, of course, the Beloved, the newest sniper, which you can also get by doing the Menagerie. So go ahead and do those activities if you want to pick up what Jimmy and I think are the top three snipers. Two kind of, uh, you know, off the beaten path snipers. Maybe the Soul Survivor, which you can get by doing Gambit or Reckoning. And then the Alone is a God, which is a year one sniper. One of my favorite snipers. I wish you could put mods on year one snipers because I might even still use the Alone as a God. It's got snapshot on it. It's extremely snappy, extremely high handling. It's just an all around great sniper. It's got six in the mag, 140 RPM. The Alone is a God is a great sniper. Uh, that you can get by doing the Leviathan raid. I think the last thing would just be uh, parting thoughts, right? There's still, there's still else. some more stuff we can go over. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. like scopes. So, like, what he more the snipers? Like, they're all really good. Just it's it's gonna be come down to preference. Like, a lot of people will like the beloved right now because it's so easily farmable and you can get snapshot and good rolls on it. Um, like just because I prefer Soul Survivor over Beloved doesn't mean that beloved one of them is any better than the other. Just as long as you have snapshot on one, like it's good. And a low zoom scope, like lower the zoom usually usually is what preferred. Now between like Twilight and Supremacy, like here's the difference. Like Supremacy, see how much more zoomed in it is than Twilight Oath. Twilight Oath, I think, has one of the lowest zooms in the game, aside from Darcy. It's a funky zoom, but it's a low zoom. And a lot of people really like this low zoom. 
Yeah, and Jimmy, you bring up a really good point, man. This is something I always tell people. Your sniper might have better stats, might have better handling, maybe even better range, which we both agree is, is, is extremely important and critical to have on a good sniper rifle. But your sniper could be complete trash. You may not have snapshot on it. But if it feels comfortable to you and you go into a game of crucible and you frag out and you feel like you can hit your shots and you feel comfortable and confident, that is your sniper rifle. You don't necessarily have to run the Supremacy, the Twilight, or the Beloved. If you pick up a Persuader or uh, I'm trying to think of some other like off the beaten path snipers, I think honestly Soul Survivor is one of them. You might pick up one of those and find it to be far superior in your eyes to something like a Twilight Oath. If so, Run that sniper. Screw the Twilight Oath. You want to run what you feel comfortable with. So much of sniping just comes down to comfort and uh, comfort, uh, muscle memory, and just feeling confident in hit, hit, and just feeling confident in hitting your shots. And that would be another like one of my tips to new snipers is don't put away the sniper after missing shots. So many people they have two shots and they'll miss right like we just did right there, and they'll just go into their inventory and put on a shotgun because they, they feel comfortable and safe with it. If you really want to get good at if you really want to get good at sniping, you've got to keep it on, and you've got to have some games where you may not top frag, you might bottom frag, but at least you're improving uh, play by play, game by game, with the sniper in your hands. Okay, so I was gonna go over a little bit over over the mouse. Okay. So as a mouse user now, I used to be controller, but as a mouse user, we have the ability to be just extremely fast right our reactions are limited to our own abilities not to hardware like a controller controller will only let you do so much but with the mouse like it's it's up to you it's individual skill basically now the big thing of mouses the mouses is the flicks of course um and a good gun to practice with and, that, and it has helped me a lot lately is a revoker so i've been practicing my flicks a lot with the revoker and i've been kind of starting to incorporate that into my normal snipers because Revoker kind of gives you a, a confidence that you can like shoot your shot and miss. But so with Revoker, and it gives you more time to practice. So Revoker helps you build up muscle memory for these flicks, and then you can incorporate that into other snipers. And flicks are, they're not they're, you don't have to do them all the time, but they definitely help with like, you know, speed and reaction and, you know, um, just taking the shot and getting out of there. Like if I'm if hunters just. Can you, um, let me come over here. Just stand, stand out in the open right there. Mm -hmm. So if I'm just popping out of cover, I don't want to sit here and take my time to, especially when against competitive players. You don't want to just sit here and come out, take your time to, you know, line up the shot. If you can just come out and just take a quick shot and get back into cover, you're gonna be out of cover, less time, which would in turn kind of help you take less damage and you know keep a point off the enemy team. So practice flicks. They're they're not the easiest to do. Right there, I got one, but it'll help you build up muscle memory on um with the revoker, and you can incorporate that under sniper, incorporate that into other snipers, and these fast flicks like they they come in handy with plays. I said this revoker just helps you with these flicks, even if it's just a body. Like a body's great because I body him, pull my prank, my hand can, and then kill him. And that's that's what a lot of sniping is is muscle memory. Yeah, and for, uh, yeah, I, I, po I pointed on this a little bit earlier when we were on Endless Veil, but for controller users, if the flick that you'd see on a mouse and keyboard, you have to be moving into your shot. It's almost like you go, you can actually move, you can run left and then aim right. If you go counter, if you go counter, to, uh, if you go diagonal to whatever, so if you're going left and you're aiming right, you can, you can hit your flicks harder. So think about that. If you're trying to, if you're in a situation where you got to hit a flick to stay alive, you'd want to do that. Practice these tips, take them into the crucible, don't put away the sniper, and within a matter of maybe even that one play session, but certainly over the course of a couple days, a couple weeks, you're gonna get better at sniping. This is the, if there's ever been a time to snipe in Destiny 2, now is the time. One of the things that Revoker does for Jimmy, who is a talented player, is it gives him the ability to, you know, take a flick shot and not really feel the, the consequence for it, because you're gonna get that ammo back. For a newcomer, the Revoker's great because you, Every shot's like a flick shot for you. Every shot's a difficult one. But you're going to get that shot back if you miss. So it kind of like eliminates that, I feel like, uh, the feeling of discouragement, I guess. Um, so definitely grind out for the Revoker and go for it in comp uh, because it's going to be a good sniper. It's going to be like a good uh, beginner sniper for you. What do you think about unflinching on the chest piece? 
Um, you know, honestly, I was really worried about because I had enhanced unflinching sniper aim chest piece, and then when I used the dragon shadow, I didn't have it anymore, and I didn't really notice that much of a difference. All right, so here's the thing about flinch: your reticule is gonna find its way back towards pretty, fairly close to where you had it originally. So if you can time the cadence of something like a 180 hand cannon or uh, a 140 scout rifle or a pulse rifle that brr, 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 you know after that brr, that's that's that window of time that you have to get it back center on the head and that's the closest it's going to be in a gunfight so start to memorize the cadence and the pacing of different weapons and how you react to their flinch it's all comes down to timing though it's difficult there's there's no secret to sniping through flinch you Sometimes your reticle is yeah. Sometimes your reticle is just gonna get lucky and happen to bounce on their head and then just pull the trigger when you when you see that. Pot, pot me twice with last word. So after those two last word shots, as as much as those made me, f but look where my reticle ended back on his head. So that's that's just this this is a really good example as to why good timing can get you through bad flinch because bad flinch is horrible in this game it's it's it i think it's the reason the main reason why a lot of people haven't sniped is because the flinch is so ridiculous but if you work on it and like i said you start to memorize the pace and flow of different shots and you you like you literally have to take that split second window in between jimmy's last word shots as an example to know that that's your chance to shoot because after that it's going to go back up above its head but in between those shots it's going to land on his head you just gotta like like jimmy said you gotta just take the shot and Pray for the best because it is it is it is really difficult. I think with the mouse too, you can kind of you can kind of just pull down really hard. Like yeah. Go go ahead and shoot me with the last word. Just a couple like. Okay, now so when I'm back to full health, just like keep bodying me, and I'll yeah. just try and whip my mouse on real hard. So, it's difficult. He was standing still, but with the mouse. So, okay, I'm going to keep botting you. Yeah, it's all timing. See, the reason I missed that shot is because I shot while he was shooting me. You have to fit that s shot in, in between shots. That's why Jimmy got that snipe on me is because he was able to fit it in in a split second in between shots. And I don't think with a controller, like, you can pull down hard enough. Try to, again? To our... You can, but... Okay, I'm going... You basically you got you got to pull down hard and then just kind of yeah. shoot. Yeah, I, I, I believe you can do the controller. It might be a little easier with the mouse because you can definitely you have more yeah, room to flick it down. Your thumb. Yeah. That and you just have more room. Like you ha you can only move your little bean like an inch, yeah. and I can move mine like across the world if I want. But still, even whether it's mouse and keyboard or controller, you can you can get by with good timing. And I, I shouldn't even say good. You have it has to be perfect, but. Uh, if it's something you work on in practice, it's kind of like more of an advanced thing, I think. But uh, flinch is definitely something that you can overcome. Shoot me again in the body. Like you see, like so when I when I shot you, I pulled my mouse down so hard that by the time that everything was done, I was looking at the ground. Yeah. Yep. But they still headshot you because I just pulled when I thought so, but I still pulled down. And then I was gonna get at another thing with mouses. Don't be afraid to be aggressive with your mouse. Don't be afraid to whip that bitch. Just make sure you hold on to it so it doesn't fly into the room, another room. Don't be afraid to whip that controller. Like, I mean, that mouse, like, hard. Don't be afraid to be aggressive. Don't don't just casually... Like, if he's strafing, don't casually just... Uh, I'm just casually tracking him, like, following him. Be the aggressor. Be the aggressor and, like, flick that shit. Yeah, I think a lot of... Being good at sniping just comes down to being super proactive. So, yeah, don't be afraid to be aggressive. Even though he's like out there strafing and stuff, don't be afraid to be aggressive and flick. I would go, yeah, I would, to, to add to that point, Jimmy, I would go as far You gained the lead. Just take the shot, because what that does is it gives you a reference point as to where, where you were, right? How far off you were of the head. So even, even missed shots offer some potential uh, for improvement in knowing where the shot went and where the head was. I tell it to Mia sometimes too. Like she's just like kind of casually tracking, like just get in there and <laughs> that mouse. Just yep. <laughs> it's okay I to like, you, like fling that mouse everywhere. 
I think too, man, like having some kind of like game sense and predict predictability towards what you think the opponent's gonna do, because you can kind of cheat a little bit, and especially for controller users, you have to kind of be a step ahead, uh, or, or, or otherwise the controller is just simply too slow. So if you can kind of build up that like memory as to what your opponent usually does in certain situations, and you can kind of have an idea of what, where they're going, you can almost aim to it before they even get there, because you, you almost have to, because it's very, it's, it's a little bit harder to track on a controller with those quick movements. But I'm still able to do it because I know he's gonna go right. I know he's gonna go back left. I know he's gonna go right. I almost let him fall into my scope. This is the biggest thing I can give for mouse users: is be aggressive with their mouse. Don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to flick. Try out some flicks. Go in a private match with your friend and flick. Yep. And it's the same thing like primary. Like with the last word, you can't just, you can't just casually track with your mouse or just don't don't be lazy with your mouse. Be aggressive with your mouse. Because he's sitting there, if he's, if he's sitting there strafing back and forth and rolling, you're just casually tracking, you're not gonna do anything. Don't be yeah, afraid to be aggressive. You, you won't be able to keep up. All right, dude. You got any other uh, hot tips? No, I think, I think the best thing you can do, if you want, if you want more tips is uh, click the links in the description to our Twitch channels. And come, come, nice. come! Ask us these questions live and watch us snipe live. And then you'll. That's actually a really good point. That's like one of my favorite things is is when people ask how to snipe. What better way to just live demonstration, right? So yeah, come through our channels, ask us some questions, and uh, we'd be happy to show you live on stream. All right, guardians. Uh, so yeah, this has been the official Seridius Mikowski collaboration how to snipe video we've got everything covered in this one how to snipe on a controller how to snipe on a keyboard and mouse how to just snipe in general uh quick tips and tricks that you can take to any game hopefully you guys enjoyed the video make sure to hit that subscribe button ring the bells leave a like and a comment and we'll catch you guys on stream right yeah we'll catch you on stream <laughs> i was thinking my mind was wandering it's like what else can they do guardian okay. get better at sniping there's that yes get better at sniping seriously hope you guys enjoyed the video take some of these tips into the crucible or private matches like jimmy said and uh yeah leave a comment below and let us know how you're pro who's who's starting to snipe because of this video and where are you guys at what do you guys feel about sniping who's already sniping and, and has taken some tips here and, and gotten to the next level we'd love to know post your tips in the video too Oh wow, I'm surprised I hit. <laughs> Alright, I guess that's about it. Later, YouTubes.